说你穿。As the commander in chief of the Georgian forces, I gave a very painful order that we will not respond even to intensive fire from the South Ossetian side. Georgian military forces have launched a huge treacherous attack on the city of Tsinvali. It is now clear why Georgia had continuously avoided signing a legally binding agreement on the non-use of force with South Ossetia and Abkhazia. But there is still time to avert more bloodshed and casualties, including civilian casualties. It's a shame that during the opening of the Olympics, when all weapons traditionally are silent, we have the reverse. On the day of the Olympic opening, the Georgian leadership has taken very aggressive steps against South Ossetia and virtually started hostilities using heavy weaponry, artillery, tanks, and there are victims, people killed and wounded. There are also casualties among Russian peacekeepers, and this is very sad. And this makes us uneasy, and it will, of course, draw a reciprocal action. We'd like it that in the framework of the Commonwealth of Independent States, that such actions get relevant judgment, and we should all take measures to stop it. I've had the opportunity to speak to our Chinese partners and with the President of the United States, and all of them say that nobody needs a war. I hope that this call will be heard by the Georgian leadership. The actions of the Georgian side led to deaths, among them are Russian peacekeepers, 
The situation reached the point that Georgian peacekeepers had been shooting at Russian peacekeepers. Now children, women, old people die in South Ossetia. Most of them are citizens of the Russian Federation. According to the Constitution, I, as the President of the Russian Federation, must protect the lives and the dignity of the Russian citizens wherever they are. Those responsible for the deaths of our citizens will be punished. People who lose their life in southern Ossetia are women, elders, children, and many of them, if not majority of them, are Russian citizens. Southern Ossetia in general is very close to a humanitarian disaster. Against this background, we have been watching the Georgian president on TV affirming that he would stay the course. And he is doing this with not only a Georgian flag behind his back, but also with the flag of the European Union. I believe this doesn't require any comments. What is really happening now is 
is like straight from the law of jungles. We are small, they are big, and they basically adapt us. And look at the timing. Olympic Games, people don't care about politics, American elections, um, you know, people, most of the uh, statesmen are gone for holidays, and it's ideal time to attack a small country. Who would care? Big Russia attacking small countries somewhere for God knows what problem. I think it is a very well planned provocation, but now it turned into large scale aggression. Everything is being shot at. There's no communications. There's nothing. God has had mercy on this place so far. We spent nearly 24 hours in the basement, just sitting there. We're here because yesterday Georgians attacked the city and the suburbs. So we have no choice because our homes aren't shelters. But we're glad we could hide here. Thank you, Russia, for your help. Nothing else to say. It's a real war out there in the city. No gas, no electricity, no communication. Our relatives don't know if we're alive or not.
Танк видно? Да. Бой комплект взрывается. Понял. Georgia could have used the years of Saakashvili's presidency in different ways to build up the economy, to develop the infrastructure, to solve the social issues both in South Ossetia and Abkhazia and the whole state. Instead of this strategy, the Georgian leadership with President Saakashvili undertook consistent steps to increase its military budget from $30 million to $1 billion. Georgia was preparing for military actions. The U.S. is responsible for the militarization of Georgia, providing it with finance and weapons. I must say, not only the U.S., but other allies back it up as well. We created this flag for Ossetia and we live under this flag in a united Ossetia. We came here to support our brothers. Please don't give up. Many volunteers are on their way and we'll do our best to join them. And we call on Russia. Please help us. I found my friends they are now fighting in the trenches. They say Georgian tanks are in the city and they are not able to take children out of the zone. Georgian military forces have launched a huge tragedy.
It's a shame that during the opening of the Olympics, when all weapons traditionally are silent, we have the reverse. On the day of the Olympic opening, the Georgian leadership has taken very aggressive steps against South Ossetia and virtually started hostilities using heavy weaponry, artillery, tanks, and there are victims, people killed and wounded. There are also casualties among Russian peacekeepers, and this is very sad. And this makes us uneasy, and it will of course draw a reciprocal action. attack on the city of Tsinvali. It is now clear why Georgia had continuously avoided signing a legally binding agreement on the non-use of force with South Ossetia and Abkhazia. But there's still time to avert more bloodshed and casualties, including civilian casualties. As the commander-in-chief of the Georgian forces, I gave a very painful order that we will not respond even to intensive fire from the South Ossetian side. 